this episode of Step Circus Videos, we're looking at project number 206 and continuing all the way to project number 218. So with project 206, we build the tone generator, and then we've got some variants of it with project 207, 208, and 209, where we're going to make some modifications. So that's what our tone generator appears as in the book. And there it is on the board. And the circuit's relatively simple. We've got, again, our two transistors, NPN, BNP, with our 100,000 ohm resistor, slide switch, 3 volt battery box, whistle chip, 6 volt lamp, which is just acting as a conductor. It's not going to light up here at all. And our speaker for audio output. So, when we turn on this circuit, it'll produce a constant tone from our speaker. So all the properties of how transistors work. Creating a constant frequency, which we of course hear as a tone out of the speaker. Now with project 207, we're going to change the pitch, or again the frequency of the sound, by putting our 0.02 microfarad capacitor on top of the whistle chip, because that'll be our point at which we can control the frequency. So by putting some capacitance on the location of the whistle chip there, we decrease the frequency of the audio so we get a lower tone being generated out of the speaker. Now project 208, well we just increased that capacitance. So now we take our 0.1 microfarad capacitor and put that on the whistle chip. And as you hear, the frequency is even lower than with the 0.02 microfarad with this 0.1 microfarad. So it's kind of a droney buzzing sound with this capacitor. And then with project 209, we take our 10 microfarad capacitor, and remember this one is polarized, so we've got a plus sign. We want it to go to the left because our positive voltage is coming this way into the circuit. We'll put this over the whistle chip. See, now all it does is click every few seconds. It's not producing a constant tone. And that has to do with both the properties of the transistors and the charging of this capacitor being 10 microfarads versus just 0 0.1 or 0 0.02 microfarad. That's it for projects 206 through 209. And now we're going to build project 210, which is more tone generator. Basically a modified version of what we got here. So here we are with project 210, which is the more tone generator. That's what the circuit looks like in the book. And there it is on the board. And essentially it's just a slightly reconfigured version of the original tone generator. We took the 6 volt lamp out and kind of redid the circuit to include our two LEDs, red D1 and green D2. And the circuit essentially sounds the same when I tried it. So like before we get the tone, but now we have both our red and green LEDs lit up there. So that's pretty much how Project 210 works. It's very similar to 206, but we got some visual indications now with our two LEDs, so projects 211, we take our 0 0.2 microfarad capacitor and put it across our whistle chip. Again, our tone drops, but this time I don't know how well the camera picks it up, you might see the brightness of the LEDs drop a little bit. And we also take our 0.1 microfarad capacitor and do the same thing. Again, our LEDs will go down to brightness a little bit with the tone. Okay. And then with project 212, we take our 10 microfarad capacitor and put that across the whistle chip. And like before, it just makes a clicking sound, but this time we can see a lot more of the LEDs flashing with that clicking sound. So 
So that's it for projects 210 to 212. Next one we're going to be looking at is the music radio station, project 213. So here we are with project number 213, which is the music radio station. There it is on the book. There it is on the board. And here essentially we've got our music IC which we're powering and we get it set up to loop because we've got the loop connection here. And it feeds through our LED so we'll see the LED flash and we've got our antenna and capacitor so this is going to use an AM radio to listen to it so we're going to basically hear the music IC output over an AM radio. Now again because I still don't have that nice radio shack AM FM radio anymore. I'm using my little crude setup that I demonstrated in the previous project video with my Amazon basic speaker and the Sony Walkman. So let me turn this on. Let me verify that this is in an AM radio setting. Okay. And I've kind of pre tuned it already, but what you would do is you would tune your AM radio to around a thousand kilohertz or somewhere around there and then when you have this on you would move vertical capacitor around so you can kind of fine-tune the audio as well to clear up any static but if we turn this on As you hear, the music I see is putting audio out, and we can visually see that with our red LED, but it's coming out of our speaker here with our AM radio. And it gets way, comes back. And so that's how project number 213 works. Now, 214 is the alarm radio station, and that we're just going to take our music I see out. Put our alarm IC in. So let's do that real quick. Pull this away. Let's swap this in. Put these in here. And now it says we should get probably a machine gun like sound when we turn it on. Again, for this project, you may have to retune the variable capacitor when you start up because of slight differences between the ICs. But we can see our flashing from our LED showing that it's putting output, and of course, we hear it over our speaker just fine. So that's how project number 214 works. Now we're going to move on to project 215 which is our standard transistor circuit. So here we're looking at project number 215 which is our strand standard transistor circuit. And there it is in the book and there it is on the board. And as the second implies it's a very typical standard transistor circuit. We have a single NPN transistor here with a couple of resistors, our LED to show our output and we have our variable resistor that helps control the gain across the gate there, which will in turn affect how bright our LED is. So when I turn it on, our LED is off right now because our variable resistor is all set to the bottom. Now as we start moving this up, our LED just starts to come on. As I go up further and further, the LED gets brighter and brighter until we reach our maximum. And as we bring the variable resistor down, the LED gets dimmer and dimmer until it reaches a point where it's just simply no longer on. So, our variable resistor allows us to control resistance on the gate here, along with our 100,000 ohm resistor, and by doing that we can adjust the amount of current 
going through our LED. And as the book implies, this is your typical transistor setup used in amplifiers. And a perfect example of an amplifier is your computer speakers that you are probably listening to this video through right now. And because of that, the little volume control that you have on your computer speakers is basically a variable resistor. And by doing that, you control the amplification going through the transistor so that you can hear your computer's audio because the actual output from your sound card is only so much. So you need something to amplify that signal so that it's audible to you and you adjust that with a volume control knob on your speakers. And of course, that's how the amplifier works. So that is project 215. Project 216 has us looking at the motor and lamp by sound. So in project 216, we're looking at the motor and lamp by sound. And looking at this, this kind of still makes it suspicious if there are errors in the typing or writing of these books because it says motor and lamp by sound, but there is no control of this circuit or anything that has to do with sound. It actually has to do with light because, as you see from our circuit here, there's a photoresistor. There's nothing related to sound going on in the circuit, so again, I'm still a little suspicious if the book is written wrong and if they have corrected that in later ones, like maybe what you might have. Anyway, here's the circuit on the board. So we got our two transistors, PNP and PN, a couple resistors, our 100 microfarad capacitor, again as I mentioned, photoresistor, and our outputs are our 6 volt lamp and motor connected in series together. So when we turn on the circuit, it momentarily takes a few seconds and then our light and motor come up, and then they run. And as we move our hand over the photoresistor, you see that our lamp dims and the motor slows down a little bit. And then we can try putting our finger completely over the photoresistor. And again, it goes down. So what's happening with the circuit is we're diverting the current from our capacitor through our photoresistor and our photoresistor of course controls how much current flows through it depending on how much light is coming through it whether we're putting more in or we're taking that away by covering it up and so that momentarily causes a drop across the gate there it's keeping our transistor from fully turning on which is again causing our motor and light to drop out now I found that the effect that they're calling for in the book is not that pronounced. So in order to actually make it more like what they're looking at, I decided that what we'll do is we'll change the 100 microfarad for the bigger 470 microfarad. This will make the operation of the circuit more pronounced in accordance with what they're looking at. So let me put this in here. Put that there. Turn our stick it back on. And now our circuit comes right up. And again, as I move my hand over, you see that the dimming of the light and the slowing down of the motor is more pronounced. And if I put my finger completely over the photoresistor, the light will go out and the motor slows down, but then it will come right back. And this is more the effect that they're asking for in the book. So if you're not getting quite the results, well, just put the bigger capacitor on. Take the 100 microfarad out, put the 470 in. And you should get that. And again, you don't have to build a project exactly like that. You can experiment around with changing elements in the projects for different behaviors like this. So that is project 216, so now we're going to look at projects 217 and 218, the fading siren and fast fade siren. So project 217, the fading siren, 
look at our circuit there in the book. There it is on the board. And essentially we've made an alarm IC circuit here using a speaker and resistor and LED, but most importantly we have our 470 microfarad capacitor providing the input connection instead of just a normal three short jumper. And because of that, when we activate the circuit, we hear the some audio and then it kind of crackles away and then goes away completely. And it stays that way no matter how much you press the button. So we need to take a capacitor and discharge it and put it back on and then we can repeat the process. So what's happening is, and I've explained this in previous SNAP circuits that we looked at, with a capacitor it's being charged up while the circuit has got current flowing through it. And the thing about capacitors, as I've explained in previous SNAP circuits, is that when a capacitor is uncharged it wants to get charged up and because of that it has low resistance so current can pass through it very easily and that of course allows our alarm IC in this case to work and produce audio and as the capacitor charges up again the resistance goes up and so less and less current passes through it the alarm IC output gets weaker and weaker and then it gets to a point where the capacitor is fully charged and there's practically infinite resistance where no current can go through it and so we don't get any more audio until, of course, we discharge the capacitor. And then once the capacitor is discharged, then the resistance is low enough again where we get audio. So with Project 218, the fast fade siren, we take our 470 microfarad capacitor off and we replace it with our 100 microfarad capacitor. And obviously being a lower capacitance, after what we just explained, it's obviously going to charge up faster, so the resistance is going to start off low and then go high real quick. So obviously, our fading effect should only last for a very short time. And while it doesn't really sound like a fading siren, just more like a little squelch or squeak or whatever you want to call it, it does illustrate the effect. See, it charges up pretty quick, so it doesn't really show the effect too well. So yeah, it's kind of a chirp. Very short compared to our 470 here. Which is more like the fading siren. Discharge that. And discharge that. So that is it for Project 4 not for Project 218 and this set of SNAP Circuits videos.